Defining your risk is extremely important. Defining uh, how much you're going to risk today uh, because you don't know. It might be a good day, it might be a bad day. You might enter in a position that will lose. You might have a losing streak for a few days or you can have a winning streak for a few days. It really depends. But defining your risk based on your capital is really important. Uh, since, for example, here, uh, just to explain it better, if you won 300 euro in the past week, you're 300 euro ahead, so you can maybe bump up that risk for this week. Even if you lose, you say to yourself, I'll, I'll trade only with that 300 euro. Usually you don't open positions with more than, let's say, 20 or 30 euro. But since you're ahead with 300 euro, you decide, okay, I'll trade this week with that 300 euro until I lose them. Or if I win a lot more, of course. So you can just start opening position with 60 euro or 70 or 100 euro, open just three positions, depending on the time frame, of course, which you're trading. If it's uh, more long term, you can bump up the risk a bit more and so on. The, the best thing here that, that happens to you is uh, sometimes uh, we are people and sometimes we get lucky. So when you risk more, you can actually win big. And uh, this is something that uh, we are all aiming to do. And when you have the opportunity to risk money that won't affect your trading and to go for the big, for the big one, it's always good to try it because sometimes it will happen and it will, you will feel like amazing. Yeah, basically, if you risk that 300 euro, you won't lose anything. I mean, you lose money that you made uh, the previous week, but you won't lose anything from your uh, main capital, your main investment, which is the most important thing. And after all, as we said, you need a thousand euro to live, so you don't need that 300 euro even if you lose them. So take some risks from time to time, but always when you take risks, measure them and uh, define them in order to not lose your whole investment or you know, getting into that emotional state where you just uh, build one loss after another. The third thing is to take the trade itself. Uh, last time we talked about that based on your trading plan and uh, your strategy to enter on the market, you take a trade. And the last and most important thing is to manage that trade in a way you don't uh, lose or even if you lose, to lose small. And when you win, to win as much as you can. This is uh, trade management. So this is the trading cycle which you will uh, overgo with each and every position you take on the market. First, to start with the stop loss, as I think a lot of traders tend to neglect that uh, part of trading. Uh, but it is one of the most important aspects of trading, actually. Uh, what is a stop loss? Probably most of you know, so I won't go in uh, much detail. So you have your chart with the prices. You have uh, some movement, some trend. You decide to buy, for example, here between three and four. And you should choose a level from those, or between them, of course, where you don't believe the price will retrace. There you put your stop loss. So in this case, for example, you decide that you put it here. This is the last bottom. Uh, we spoke about bottoms and tops, so you know what it is. And you don't believe that the price will retrace back to here. Uh, so you're leaving some room between your entry and your stop loss. Even if the price here makes a small uh, correction, you expect it to continue up. Also, uh, in order to define your stop loss better, uh, you have to uh, define a spot on the, on the chart where if the price goes there, you expect it to just continue dropping. So for example here, if you expect the price to go back to three, you expect it to continue further down. So there is no point in putting your stop loss at two or at one because this is your analysis. You have to trust your analysis and it's always better to put it here since you know that if this level is broken, the price will continue down and here you lose a lot more than here. Calculating the stop loss, uh, there are two uh, types of calculations for stop loss. You can either calculate it in pips 
or you can calculate it in money. Uh, the money part is a lot more important, but just a few words about how to calculate it in pips. So you have an entry point or an entry price. In this example, let's say 3.5. You have your stop loss at 3, so you just take, uh, uh, take out the entry uh, price with the stop loss. Actually, from the stop loss, you take out the entry price and you get your uh, stop loss in pips. It can be 20 pips, it can be 30 pips, it really depends, but the most important thing is to calculate the stop loss in account risk, meaning that you need to know how much you, pips you are risking, so in our case, let's say 20. You need to know your pip value, so this means how much one pip uh, gives you. It can be one dollar, it can be one cent, it can be $100, depending on uh, the investment you made in that position and your, your leverage, of course. And the position size. It can be a full lot, it can be a micro lot, it can be... Uh, it wasn't a nano lot, it was something else, but... Let's say tenth of a watt. And yeah, uh, yeah, okay, so... In this case, we have a 27 pips um, stop loss. One pip is 0 0.2. Uh, dollars and uh, I have opened uh, two micro lots in this case. So you just multiply all of it and you know how much money you're going to lose if your stop loss is hit by the price. That way you can define uh, your risk. So if, if you have a hundred, uh, if you have a thousand dollars bankroll, you're risking one percent. A little bit more, but yeah, one percent, one point one. Uh, moving on with the stop loss, I would like to show you a few examples why it is so important to place your stop loss correctly. And I'll also show you a few examples uh, why you should use a stop loss actually. <laughs> because uh, I know, actually known a lot of uh, people, a lot of traders, and I see them every day in LinkedIn or other social medias posting their trades, which are most of them winning ones, which is good, but they're making like five pips profit, but they're not using a stop loss. Sooner or later, they will enter into a losing streak and they'll lose everything they made. This is also connected to uh, risk management. Also here, we want to mention that uh, you should be prepared all the time for uh, something, uh, let's say, unexpected to happen. You can have a stop of your internet, electricity stop, whatever it is. If you don't have a stop loss, there is nothing to stop your position going against you. And uh, if something closes your platform or your computer breaks down on everything, you don't have control of your position. In a way, if you have stop loss, uh, even if it's going against you, uh, electronic key will close it to you. Yeah, I have an example for that as well. <laughs> so uh, we should stop using that blue but uh, here you have a blue rectangle. Uh, you can see we talked about Bollinger Bands last time. This is Pascal's phase one. Uh, I just call it the squeeze. So the lines of the indicators are squeezing around the price and we are having this square formation which is being broken here. And this is our entry point in this case. Let's see, you can see what happened after that. But what I want to show you is that um, where you can put your stop loss. Now, if you want to uh, play it extremely safe, uh, you can place it above those uh, heights, here, heights here. But if, uh, if you already understand how stop loss works and you can do a good analysis, you know that if uh, this, first of all, this area will act as a resistance area in the future. But you know that if this area is broken at some point, the price can just continue going up, like I gave you the example here. If this is broken, you expect for the price to continue. So there is no point in putting your stop loss all the way up here, losing a lot more, when you can put it right here, for example. And you can see, uh, we're going to talk about uh, closing signals in a bit, but if you haven't taken, uh, in this case, uh, the profits from your trade. For example, you're waiting for it to make, in this case it made one to three, actually, maybe even a bit more, but sometimes it won't make that much, and if you don't take your profits, 
you might end up uh, your stop loss being hit. And again, I, this is an example to show you that after the price broke through that uh, resistance area, you can see that it just continued up. So it was going to hit that stop loss as well, but you are going to lose a lot more than here. Uh, so another important thing about the stop loss is to leave some room uh, for the trade to brief. And I chose this example to show you how uh, the price can actually retrace uh, just for a while, touch your stop loss, and then continue down. It happens, believe me. And it's like the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> but, uh, you know, even sometimes when you put your stop loss correctly, it still happens. But a lot of times, if you know how to put your stop loss, uh, the pair or the price will miss your stop loss and it will continue in your favor. So in this case, you can see that here we had a bearish engulfing. We also talked about that. We are having lower highs, lower lows, meaning that we are in a downtrend, so we are looking only for sell positions. So we take a trade here on this candle after the bearish engulfing has finished. And we put our stop loss exactly at the last top. Can you see what happened here? The price just went up, touched the stop loss, and you can see how far down it went. And by the way, this is the H4 time frame. So those are a lot of pips you missed because of your stop loss being touched was that here. A, was that a real trade? Huh? Was that a real trade? Uh, it was that a real trade, like a real one? Uh, because no, I uh, that one, no. I have another one yeah. that's real. <laughs> the point is that you should always uh, leave some uh, room to breathe. Uh, you can, it's an okay tactic to put your stop loss above the last top or uh, last bottom, depending on uh, which side you take on the market, but don't, uh, don't glue so to say, your stop loss to the top exactly, because this might happen. Put it a bit further up. You have nothing to lose. If, we, if the price reverses from here, you can just close your trade again here and still lose like half of the investment instead of leaving it going all the way to your stop loss. But if something like that happens, you're safe over here. Uh, so another example, this is uh, an entry uh, which is happening late in the uptrend. You can see where the uptrend actually started. Uh, so an entry here, I don't recommend it, but I use this example just to show you why you need to use a stop loss. So you decide to enter here in this example. We have a square again, phase one, or Bollinger squeeze, or however you like to call it. Usually Wait they are the same things, but uh, yeah. And you have a huge break with a huge bullish candle showing a bullish sentiment on the market. So you expect for this uptrend to continue. So let's say you take that trade, even with a smaller investment. You can see what happened after that, but the important thing here is that, for example, you decide this time, okay, so I believe that this uptrend will continue. I won't put any stop loss. This is 8 a.m. in the morning. So basically during that time, you slept most of the times. So you don't have a stop loss again. But you wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning, you have to do something, someone calls you, you have to rush out of uh, your house, you take a shower, uh, you don't have the time to check out your position because if you check it out here, you can say, okay, I'm, I'll close it. Or maybe you can check it and you say, I'm an optimist, it will retrace. Actually, don't do that, never. This is like very bad. Uh, but nevertheless, for example, you have your whole day occupied, so you're unable to watch what is going on with your position, you don't have a stop loss, and you can see what happens till the end of the day. So instead of having a stop loss somewhere here, just below this broken formation where you expect if the price returns, it will just continue further down, you're leaving this trade without a stop loss. Here, for example, you 
uh, would have lost, let's say, 100 euro, depending how much you invested, or like 10 euro, it doesn't matter. Here, you will be losing, well, a bit more, maybe like five times more than here. It so, could be like your whole bankroll. Yeah, so this is uh, why you should always use a stop loss. You don't know uh, what will happen. You have to go to a meeting or you have to do something. You won't be able to watch your position. And it's better to just lose those 10 or 100 euro or whatever than losing a lot, lot more just because you didn't put a stop loss. I yeah, just uh, wanted to mention as well uh, that uh, this is a very good example why you shouldn't uh, use average down in uh, range products or, of course, average up, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, whenever you see that something is going against you and it's against your plan, just, uh, it's just take your loss and that's it, forget about it. Because if you have, like, the mindset, oh, okay, it will retrace back, uh, eventually it will go up, well, maybe it won't. So, basically, if you continue buying on the way down in order to uh, move your enterprise, this could uh, actually make you bankrupt really quickly. Yeah, basically on the markets there is no room for hope. Leave hope at home and just trade what you see. Uh, another type of stop loss, uh, which I want to mention here, is the trailing stop loss. What is a trailing stop loss? It basically represents the same. You place your stop loss at a level where you think the market won't go, and that's all. But the trailing stop loss follows the movement of the price. Now it has both advantages and disadvantages. And with this simple example, I'm going to show you uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages. So here in this case, again, we have a small range, which is being broken with this uh, bullish candle. So you decide to enter on the market. You would place your stop loss below that range. This is the best spot. Of course, if you're trading on lower time frame and you're quite sure that the price will not retrace inside of that range, you can place it somewhere at the middle or like over here, uh, just below this uh, bottom. But the safest approach is to put it just below the, uh, below the whole formation. Maybe here uh, something that uh, we can add it that uh, some people will uh, even if they put the stop loss inside of the in, into the range and it's been hit, they will make a re-entry and, and then they will put it from this price under the range. So this is another tactic that, that you can use. Uh, you can use it with uh, less exposure and try to re-enter two times in one and the same trade. Yeah, there, there are a lot of different tactics, but I recommend this one, f especially yeah, this if you don't have time to watch your trade uh, or if you are not that experienced yet. In order to put it here, you either has to do, uh, have to do what value does, uh, which is a great tactic, but you have to be constantly monitoring the market because if your stop loss is hit here, the point is to enter back again here and put your stop loss below. But if you miss that entry, you'll just be left with a loss in that case. So you need to watch it. And you can still put it here if you're like extremely good at trade management and you can close, you can define what the market is going to do next basically and close uh, the trade before it reaches your stop loss in that way minimizing the losses. But back to the trailing uh, stop loss. So you can see that uh, the after your entry the price makes this uh, uptrend before uh, stopping for a while here. And what the trailing stop loss does is to move with the same amount or same uh, area or space up. So your stop loss automatically goes from here all the way to here. That way, uh, you can use a trailing stop when, for example, you're unable to watch the markets for a few days, maybe going on vacation, but you have some open positions. Just put a trailing stop loss and, you know, you either lose your investment if it hits your initial stop loss or here you're already in some very small profit. So even if the price retraces from here and hits your stop loss here, your trade is still profitable. Then the price here continues up and again, your stop loss moves with it. You can see that here now you're on a lot more profit. And actually, after this move, we have a bit uh, more move up. So your trailing uh, 
Oops. So your trailing stop loss will go a bit further and it will probably be hit somewhere here. Uh, those are the advantages of the trailing stop loss. But a disadvantage, at least for me, if you are able to watch your trades, watch the market, uh, you don't want to close your position here. You're going to lose from uh, win from your entry to here. But you could have closed your position over here and actually maximize your profits with that much in this case. Because here you can see that the previous top was broken, which is a sign of a reversal. This is regarding trade management, which I'm going to talk about now, but I just want to show you why uh, using a trailing stop loss when you are able to watch the markets is not that good. Uh, it's actually making your profits a lot less. Not every time, but most of the times. Now, a take profit is similar to a stop loss. It's a level you place ahead of the price, uh, either in a buy or sell position, which if reached, uh, you want the broker to automatically cancel your trade and pay you your profits, basically. So it's a pretty good level. But uh, there are some huge disadvantages with it again, uh, just to show you. So you're having an entry here. And for example, you believe that the price will reach this uh, level. It does, so you put uh, a take profit here, a take profit uh, order which, uh, when the price reaches it, takes your profits home. It closes uh, your full position. Uh, about advantages, first, I want to give you an example. You can see, again, we have a square. We have a break of this square. So we decide to try that trade. We believe that after this long, uh, very long uptrend here and that uh, triple top formation, we are expecting a reversal, so this is our sign off for a reversal. And you put your take profit level here. This is a strong support area. You can see from it the previous strong uptrend started, so you expect to have a reaction from that level. So if you are, again, unable to watch your trade, or uh, I usually tend to put a take profit level on my trades that stay open overnight, uh, because I'm unable to watch it, obviously, during the night. Uh, and I don't want to miss that touch. You can see how the price went in your uh, direction. It just touched this strong support area and started going back up. I don't want to wake up in the morning and find myself here when I could have taken this huge profit. So I usually put take profit level for the overnight trading, if I'm not going to trade overnight, of course. And I usually remove it the next day and just watch it during the day and decide what to do with that trade. This is an advantage uh, for, for the take profit. Uh, now I want to show you a disadvantage of using a take profit. Again, we have a huge uptrend here, we have uh, a range being formed, which is broken. This is the H4 chart, by the way, which is broken by this huge uh, bearish candle. So you decide to take that entry. And you decide to put a take profit here, because uh, you can see a few times this area, the price reacted from that area, either as a resistance or as a support here, and uh, actually even here for a while. So you decide that the price will most likely reach uh, that area, and then maybe you'll see a new uptrend wave back up to here, or like up to here at least, and you want just to take your profits, which you made from here to here. Why this is a disadvantage? You're making profits, right? Well, it's disadvantage because this was the move after that. You can see that the price reached that area where you put your take profit, it just stayed there for a while, uh, not making any sudden reversal, uh, reversing moves or whatever, and just continued further down very strongly. So you took that from here to here as a profit instead of taking from here all the way to here because you used the take profit. That's why it's always best if you are able to manage your own trades, not to place a take profit. 
this is a huge disadvantage of that uh, uh, trading technique, so to say. Uh, now, we reached to the closing signal and why it is important. Now, all those disadvantages we talked about, about the stop loss, uh, trailing stop loss and take profit, comes to an end here. Why you need to have a closing signal? It is, it is as much important as your entry signal. First, it helps you maximize your profits. It helps you minimize your losses and you can free your margin in order to position yourself better on the market. Value told you what margin is. When you open a position, you have a locked margin, which you are unable to use. It's like a co collateral for the broker uh, to use uh, for your position. And you cannot use it until you close your position. So when you uh, find a closing sign and decide to close your position, that locked margin becomes free once again and you can use it for a better position, maybe. Let me show you with, uh, actually, this is a real example. And it is actually from last week on the Euro-Japanese yen currency pair M30 time frame. <clears throat> this is from the newsletter, and it is solely my mistake here. I want to show you uh, because that why it is so important to have a closing signal and this is a mistake that tons and tons of traders do and that is why they are losing traders. Actually, I even do it from time to time when I, for example, forget or don't watch the market or whatever. You can see that I decided to enter here on this candle. Actually, it was on this one, I think, but I didn't draw it very correctly here. Doesn't matter, I want to enter here so I did, and you can see that the price uh, continued further down. Now, a bit of a backstory: the Euro Japanese Yen is in a range for quite a while now. Uh, this red area here is the top or the ceiling of the range. You don't see the bottom, uh, it's further below. We saw it today, actually, uh, touch the bottom. And this purple uh, rectangle is the middle area of the range. Uh, most often than not, the middle, middle area of the range can act as a support and resistance, so it's an area you should always watch when trying to trade the range. So, I entered here with the idea to watch how the price behaves over here and then decide if I want to close my position or if uh, this middle area is broken uh, to keep it. As you can see, uh, shortly after, although we had a break, uh, the range is on H4, so an M30 break doesn't mean that the H4 candle broke the, the middle of the range. Actually, this retracement can be just a huge tail on the H4 candle, confirming that the middle of the range is not broken. So we had this uh, downtrend move, then we had a wave up, which entered back inside that middle of area, then we had a shorter downtrend move here, thus making a higher low. Uh, the high was almost identical, but the lows, you can see, it made a higher low, which is a confirmation for a possible reversal on the market. Uh, then we had a new high here, another uh, downtrend, a higher low again, so higher highs, higher lows, we are back in an uptrend. So what the hell am I doing with the sell trade here? I had to get out of the market over here, uh, this is one of the signals you can use uh, to define a reversal and to close uh, your trade. Of course, I would have closed some percentage of the trade, but uh, we are talk we're going to talk about partial, uh, partial trades and closing parts of your trades in just a few slides. But the idea is that, uh, Pascal told you about that, this is a W uh, formation. You can see it, the price goes down, makes a move up down again, which is not further down than that one, and a move up. This is those formations usually uh, in <clears throat> indicate that we might see a reversal on the market. And as you can see, we actually saw, and I didn't close, and didn't close, and didn't close, and my stop loss was hit over here. <laughs> so this whole trade was solely my mistake. It could have been a winning trade instead of a losing one. 
or even if it was a losing one, it could have been like, for example, to close here and lose just a bit, not to leave it reach my stop loss. Uh, so this is one of the closing signals you can use. Of course, you can make your own. Uh, I, find, I find that one uh, very uh, good for me if I, of course, uh, take it into account. But overall, uh, it hasn't failed me much. Very rarely uh, from here the price continues in my direction, so I don't mind uh, closing here, taking smaller profit, and then it happens. But most of the times it will just reverse against me and I'll lose instead of winning. <clears throat> so uh, here is another example, uh, but this one is a bit different. Uh, you can see that uh, we had a small, actually, uh, again, the blue rectangle isn't uh, seen very good here, but we have this uh, square here, which is broken with this candle, so we decide to enter here. The price continues further up, makes another rectangle over here, and then reverses the movement with a huge uh, bearish candle. Now, this is another uh, closing sign for me to that this uh, very, very old uptrend, as you can see, has probably come to an end, and it is a lot better for me to close my position here instead of waiting for the price to reach my stop loss. In, this, in that way, I am uh, protecting myself, my investment, my capital, from unnecessary losses, so I'm minimizing the losses, and at the same time, I'm freeing uh, some my margin, my lock margin, and I can, you know, position myself better. If I believe that this uptrend will continue and this is temporary, I can position myself then maybe here on, to take a trade on this uptrend. The point is, you need to have a closing signal as much as you need to have an entry signal. <clears throat> 